What's up my friends, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going over how to add an orchestra around a solo piano track. I think I've done videos in the past on the channel about uh, maybe treating the piano more as like a background instrument and then using that as one of many elements in an orchestral arrangement. But in this case, let's actually treat the piano as more of a soloist function. So how do we add the rest of the orchestra around it to maybe enhance it and support it a little bit, but not overwhelm the piano. So I'm gonna share my personal process with you on this. Uh, we're going to try to arrange it start to finish and see if you can maybe pick up a couple insights along the way or maybe a couple techniques, tricks you want to incorporate into your own workflow. Um, it's going to be fun. I've come up with a piano track already, so we're going to add the rest of the orchestra around that. So before we really get started, I want to put something free in your hands first. Uh, this is my orchestration essentials guide, and it should give you a very fundamental framework for approaching your orchestral mockups and your arrangements from start to finish. It's a five-step process that I follow every single time from the initial idea all the way to the completed master, the completed arrangement. It's super practical. So if you apply that, you should see some uh, drastic improvements in your workflow. And I hope that it can uh, you know, really give you just a, a clear, simple vision on how to approach every single arrangement that you do when it comes to mockups. So I hope that's valuable to you. Uh, you can click the first link in the description box below to download it 100% free as my gift to you for watching this video today. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Uh, let me play the piano track for you first. Just for fun, I thought we would just use the entire Cinematic Studio series uh, lineup here. So we have the piano playing the solo piano part, but then we have all the string parts. And then just for woodwinds, I threw in a flute and a bassoon in case we'll need those. And then also a French horn, because this is more of a mellow uh, sketch, no, nothing too bombastic, nothing too energetic. So I wanted to choose the instruments that were maybe a little bit more conducive to that environment. So without further ado, let's play through this sketch and we'll start orchestrating. Here we go. Cool. So that's the sketch, a uh, pretty mellow D major type of calm type of passage, right? So the first thing I want to do is maybe start with the strings because in this type of context, I always consider the strings the foundation of the orchestra. And I think it would support the piano very nicely. Um, usually I would kind of debate whether I want to start with the violins or do I want to start with the basses. I'll start with either one, the, the extreme top or the extreme bottom, just to lay down that harmonic foundation or that top line so I know what to arrange the other lines within, like kind of the ranges, right? In this case, I think I'll start with the violins, and I'm thinking whether I want to start at the very beginning or do I maybe want to start a little bit later? Because uh, I think it's nice to have contrast in our arrangements, not just having you know the, the instruments play the entire time. So why don't we maybe leave the first four chords alone and then I'll bring in the violins on the second half or maybe the answer phrase of this passage. So let's hear this one more time and we're going to actually start recording some ideas here. Okay, so yeah, the, the basic process here is just that I wanted the, the first um, theme or the motive to essentially play on its own first. And then the response of the theme kind of adds that bit of, uh, you know, that, that string texture to the arrangement, just to spice it up a little bit. And I w really wanted it to seep in uh, out of nowhere. So you might see that the uh, modulation data is a little bit too low here. Yeah, I'm kind of hitting zero, so I don't really hear it. that a little bit. Cool. Maybe I can extend this last chord of the piano slightly. 
if the piano's a solo, I definitely don't want the piano ending before the strings do, or else that's just like the accompaniment being lazy, right? So I think this is pretty good to start with. Let's see. Yeah, so the idea here is because the piano is playing in a pretty middle register, like it's playing around the middle C register, I don't want the strings too high to potentially obstruct the main melody line. Like I want it to be in a similar range to the piano, right? And because it's a violin, it's more of the, one of the higher instruments, so I can't go too low below middle C. So in this case, I'm sticking around here. Now this F sharp, I do like the sound of it, but my ear is kind of being drawn to the F sharp as being the melody note here instead of the D in the piano. So I might actually transition that back down to the D. I think that might be a little more effective. Right, so now there's no question that that, that melody is going down to the D instead. Now, Yeah, so right now, I mean, the, the strings and piano are kind of at a similar volume. So I can either turn up the piano or turn down the strings because right now the, the string line is slightly too even with the piano, if that makes sense. So that the strings can be misinterpreted as the melody instead of the piano if it's too loud, right? So I think the actual line itself I do like because it's kind of expanding up, it's giving more, more width, right? But... I might actually turn these all down a little bit because again, we want the piano to be the solo instrument. We don't want it to be just another one of the background textures. So just to keep everything kind of balanced. Balance is so, so important. Okay, just to make any last final changes here, these last few notes were a bit delayed. So what I'm gonna do is just drag them back. This guy is a little too far back. And then just to make sure that this main line here in the strings are not overtaking the main melody, I'm just gonna bring the modulation down just a bit more here. Don't need it peaking way too high. There we go. Cool. Okay, let's move on to Violence 2 now. So most likely the Violence 2 are just gonna be playing support to the Violence 1, most likely in harmony, uh, maybe a third below or something like that. But let's, let's experiment and see what happens. So my first note here in the violins one is D. Yes. So here I might maybe try something else. Let's find out. Cool, okay, just a couple botch notes here, but I had a general sense of what the chords were. Uh, I kind of remembered some of the voices, so I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that these first few notes were fine. I'm just gonna turn out the modulation. Yeah, so this, this actually here should be the B and then this A can hold just because of the chords. So you can see they're basically a fourth part. up to the sixth chord. Um, yes, yeah, so I forgot what the chord was here, so I actually had the wrong chord there. This is an A, which is fine, because that's kind of a B minor seven sound. I like how the D kind of rises up here while the piano is holding its chords. So a, a bit of counter melody here actually, which is nice. And then let's see. Here I'm just going to hold that D. 
let's maybe go up to a B here because this would be the four chord. Maybe we'll go to the A actually, let's see. Ah, no, no, no. The G was actually better because I don't really want that major second sound. Um, maybe, let's see, what happens if I go to the A here? Yeah, and then maybe here, let's just go down to the F sharp. So now the parts look like this. Let's hear this, second half. And the modulation is relatively similar to the violins one. Maybe it's a little high, let's check. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little high. Maybe I'll just readjust slightly here. We definitely don't want the violins two to be louder than violins one in this case. All right, good, good. Let's move on to the violas. Naturally, they're gonna be even lower than the violins two. So we're definitely going to be uh, recording that in uh, while, while keeping that in mind. All right, so you can tell that this viola part, I'm really trying to keep it more mellow here. And I'm, I really wanted to play well with the violin parts, right? So you can see how all three parts are essentially uh, mimicking each other in a way, or they're, they're playing well with each other, right? Similar rhythms, similar approaches, filling in the chord tones, especially for the violas. So let's kind of tweak some of these notes here. Let's see. if I went up to the C sharp a bit earlier. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Start this B a little bit earlier. Same motion. Then here, let's actually go down to E because I already have a G in the melody. So here, if I think we put the E here, then that has a nice root sound for the E minor chord. So these will be a tad earlier. Do, 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 do. I think doing the A is probably better here. Yeah, and then we'll just hold the A until the end, basically. Let's see, so we have the D, we have the F sharp, and we have the A. So you can see how the D major chord is now already complete through these three parts, you know? So maybe let's hear this one more time. Let's see how these three parts sound, and then we have cello and basses left for the strings. Yeah, so overall the approach is pretty simple so far. In the first half, because the melody is a little bit lower in the middle C register, I also want the strings to be in that register to kind of complement that idea. But in the second half, um, the, uh, the harmonic progression is a little bit faster. There's a bit more passion there. It feels more like a development. So I think it made more sense to let the violins one kind of soar up a bit more, let the violins two support that underneath. And then the violas can respectively also go up a little bit to support as well. So now we're left with uh, celli and basses, and the basses can be quite dark, especially in Cinematic Studio strings. What I'm thinking is maybe I'll reserve the basses for the second half only, and maybe the celli here, I'll outline the, the bass uh, function here. So let's, let's try this out.
I love that cello set. It really just adds that depth and that foundation here. So especially because here in the first half, we are doing uh, the outlining of the harmonic foundation. So we have the chords, D, B, G, A, B, right? These are all the root uh, notes of each of these chords because they're all in root position. Okay, now I kind of forgot a little bit where the violas are. So, okay, good. Here, I was still able to keep the celli relatively uh, stable under the violas. So they didn't go too close together or anything. Let's just check this. So here, the first note in the violas is the B. So yeah, if it's the B minor chord, then the next chord toned down would be the F sharp, which does make sense. And let's see here. Yeah, so we have the C sharp. So here we can just hold the A actually. Here, yeah, here you can see how the celli kind of rises up to double the viola there. I'm not sure we actually need that. Maybe, maybe we'll actually go down the octave for that note. So go down to this A, let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I kind of do like that. And now you can see how these, uh, or this last D major chord so far is D, F sharp, A, D. So we have a nice extended D chord. And I know that in the basses, I'm probably gonna go the D below that just to give it that one octave below a uh, foundational feeling. So awesome, this is pretty much done because the celli is now playing some counter melodies in the second half. So that gives the basses, the double basses an opportunity to outline the harmonic foundation. Uh, so let's just put that in. Okay, let's just double check this. And then here, I know this A is being doubled by the cello. What happens if we bring it down the octave? Yep, totally fine. So this is what the entire passage looks like. Do keep in mind though that the double basses are notated, or sorry, they're uh, they're heard an octave lower than written. So it looks like the double basses are super close to the celli, but they're actually an octave lower. So yeah, you can see here how the violins one, two, and violas are are generally very similar in their type of shape, whereas the cellos. In the first half, I said I use them to outline the roots, and then in the second half, I use them more to accompany the top parts, the upper string parts. Whereas I let the double basses do its thing of outlining the harmonic foundation. So taking over what the celli were already doing in the first half. Great. Let's have one more listen and then maybe we'll add in the woodwinds and the French horn. Let's see. Notice also how the piano is relatively present in the mix. It's quite loud. I'm trying to keep the other instruments quiet and very smooth. So that's so balance is, is key for sure. Now I'm hearing the flute maybe outlining just the second half here, um, maybe doubling the violins one in a way. Let's see how this sounds, or doubling the, the melody in the piano, but maybe an octave or two higher. So I'm, this is what I'm hearing. So I love the flute because it adds that airiness and that that breath that you don't really get from the strings. Um, I used to play the flute a little bit in high school, so I'm maybe a little biased, but. Awesome. 
couple little note tweaks here. I think I'm just gonna remove that G and then I'm gonna remove this B as well and just gonna hold just like this. Let's have one more lesson. This B is coming a bit early. Nice. Notice how the flute is just quiet enough that it blends into the background very nicely, but at the same time, it's not you know too loud so that it overtakes uh, the rest of the arrangement at all. Awesome. Now we have the bassoon. So I kind of chose just a lower woodwind instrument here a little bit. Maybe we can have it start in the second half because again, we're in the lower registers here. So maybe the bassoon will fit in nicely. So yes, let's have a quick listen to that. I think what I'll do is maybe just mute the piano for now so we can hear what's actually going on here. So the bassoon is a very uh, warm kind of lower instrument, but let's see. You can hear that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And brought it up a little bit. So I'm really trying to find these counter melodies, these, these passages that would be enjoyable for the player, right? I don't want to just keep that one static note the entire time, or I don't want to just be jumping up and down. The voice leading that you choose here is very, very crucial for this type of passage. Um, of course, it's entirely contextual depending on the genre of music that you're writing, but in this case, I think that does work. Now, because we already have the bassoon as the lower um additional element aside from the strings in the first half, I think I want to use the French horn only for the second half, maybe even just for the last few chords, actually. Yeah, these rising notes here, maybe I'll, I'll double the melody an octave um, or maybe a unison with the piano, let's see. Let me do that one more time, actually. I, want to do, I do want to go down to that B, so. Nice. Again, I want to tweak that modulation because I did start at zero, which is not going to hear any, we're not going to hear anything. And then bring, oops, bring it down here. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so start earlier, start earlier. Yeah, and that's it, cool. So why don't we hear the whole thing one more time just to see how it's all sounding together and then we'll just maybe just recap very quickly. Have a listen. Oh, sorry, I muted the piano. That should probably be in there for sure. Yeah, so you notice how without the piano, it does sound slightly hollow, but that's also because the piano is playing certain notes in the lower registers. And so if we have too many instruments on those low notes, then they're going to kind of muddy up everything. So it's all entirely contextual and just want to keep that in mind. All right, one last time. Here we go. That's it. That, that is the, uh, that's the idea there. So just to quickly recap my approach here, um, I just listened to the piano part a few times. I knew where the 
the general register was for the piano, which is around the middle C register, maybe an octave, give or take, above and below that. So then I wanted the strings, first of all, as the foundation of the orchestra, I really wanted them to set that basic foundation behind the piano, really just as a supportive element. So I didn't want them to go too high or too low uh, to like contrast from where the piano was, because I want that to feel like one cohesive unit. And I want the listener to interpret you know, the piano as the main element. So the textures in the background are supporting, but not on like way higher or way lower registers so that they feel separated. I want them to all feel cohesive. So I treated the strings as the main element here. Then adding the woodwinds and the brass in for color and texture, that's usually my go-to technique here because I don't really want additional counter melodies here when they're not needed. I already accomplished most of that in the strings, right? So the woodwinds are basically playing more of a textural role, adding some depth and color. The French horn is just accentuating and doubling that last melody a little bit to round it off nicely. And you get, again, that additional color with the warmth of that horn. So again, this is just one context, one example, of course, but uh, you know, when you're working on your own mock-ups, maybe it's uh, some something more of a ballad, something a little slower, you might find that this approach tends to work a little bit. Once you consider the core instrument, then you consider the ones behind it and work backwards from there. Think about what the foundational instruments are and then what additional ones can enhance those instrumentations um, to, to really provide that texture and that color. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, and again, if you are looking maybe to enhance your own framework when it comes to orchestration and arranging, you want uh, maybe a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually go from your initial idea to the completed arrangement, I do want to give you my orchestration essentials guide. It's 100% free. And again, it walks through the five steps that I take every single time when I go from my initial idea and I hear something in my head, how I translate to the DAW and add in my instruments and go from there all the way to the completed master. It's super didactic, super practical, and I want to get that to you totally free. So click the first link in the box below. It'll take you straight there. You can download it right away as my gift to you. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.